because you talk about stories so much and the importance of stories, does the Jordan Peterson story have a happy ending? And does that even matter? Or what do you think the, the ending of the Jordan Peterson story is? I don't have any idea. Um, you know, when I was, from the time I was about 20, I kind of had a sense of what would happen to me. I had some sense of it. But only, it really only extended till I was about my age, 50, something like that. And I didn't know what would, I didn't have a vision for after that. And see, I thought when I wrote, wrote Maps of Meaning, I remember telling one of my, my peers, um, I said, I think everyone will think the way that I think in this book in 50 years. And he said, well, that's a pretty grandiose claim, I guess, that, that was it. Something like, well, fair enough, you know, but, but, but by the same token, I wasn't, taking I wasn't taking credit for the ideas, like, I was taking some credit for clarifying them. The, the ideas were already there. They're everywhere, those ideas, but clarifying them is something. And so I knew that what I was working on in Maps of Meaning was at the center of things in some sense. Um, and that manifested itself in my teaching career because, well, I taught at Harvard for six years and the course there, which was based on my book, was very, very popular and, and students regarded it as life-changing and the same thing happened at the University of Toronto. And so I knew that that, that power was in those ideas. But I don't see my future very clearly from here on in. You know, over the next year, I'm going to do more of what I'm doing. I want to return to the Exodus, to Exodus. I like doing those biblical lectures. I thought that was useful and important. So I want to do that. But my vision kind of, kind of runs out in December of 2019. And I don't know what, because all of this is so unlikely. You know, I've thought, for the last two years, every single day, I've thought, well, this has got to come to an end. Like, this is ridiculous. And this is ridiculous. It can't continue. But it is continuing. And so, I have no idea. How, how do you predict something like that? I mean, for the longest time, I thought that as this wave grew, the probability that I would end up like a surfer smashed on the beach was the highest probability outcome. And I still probably think that that's the highest probability outcome. <laughs> but, but I'm not as apprehensive about that now as I was because in some sense, assuming I don't do anything spectacularly stupid like defend Count Dankula <laughs> on Dave Rubin. <laughs> um, The, the people, the people who would like to, that who would have liked to have taken me out, have thrown the worst that they could throw at me, as far as I can tell. I mean, my 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 cardinal day in terms of vilification, and it's quite a contest, by the way, because there were many days like that. Was a day where I was simultaneously accused by a an alt right magazine of being a Jewish shill, and accused by. A, a Jewish magazine of being uh, tantamount to Hitler himself. I thought, well, that pretty much does it. It's like <laughs> the Nazis hate me because I'm a Jewish shill, and the and well, this particular Jewish publication, you know, compared me to Hitler. And I thought, well, that's it. There's where else do you go after that? We're going to call me Mao. It's like it's still already. He, he, that's just not that much past Hitler. And so, you know, and so I'm not that concerned that in the absence of some fatal stupidity on my part, which certainly could still happen, because we have that proclivity for fatal stupidity within all of us. Um, I'm not too concerned that I'm going to be taken out by my ideological opponents, but by the same token, this is a pretty unwieldy and unprecedented situation to be in, and so I'm, I'm not under any illusions about its stability or safety. So. Who knows, man?